What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth, bringing you the first video of 2021. Happy New Year. Now, if you watched the finale to 2020, I did a video on Open Door Technologies. That stock, I said it was probably a buy around $22. It's now trading a week later, over $28, up another 10% today. So if you jumped on board, congratulations on that one. I'm, I couldn't be more excited about myself. So what are we gonna talk about today? Well, I get this question all the time. Hey, Eric, I wanna have some growth in my portfolio, but I don't wanna have a 100 times forward sales or a 600 PE stock. What do I look at? What companies do I look at? Well, I've got a very large cap stock that gives you solid growth, really, really good profit margin. The company is Adobe. And I think you're gonna be shocked by seeing some of the numbers I'm about to show you. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about Adobe. What I like about this stock is it's a large cap, it's a large company, but it's somewhere I can park my money and I know I'll get a good return from it. So it's not necessarily gonna give you 100% return or anything like that. It's not gonna be the top performer in your portfolio, but it's gonna be a nice long-term hold that's going to give you some good growth. It has profitability as a company. And I think it's a solid long-term investment with lots of upside in the share price, not only in 2021, but also beyond. So the first thing I want to show you, I want to look at, this is just Google Finance, but we talk about on this channel, and if you're not subscribed to Fired Up Wealth, please hit the subscribe button. It's great to have you as a subscriber, and you can learn about technology and disruptive technology stocks, as well as dividend growth investing on this channel. The Fired Up methodology is really about financial independence, retire early on dividends, about retiring young and enjoying life. But that's for another video. So today we're talking about Adobe. Now, if you, look at, if you look at some of the past videos I've done on Rule of 40, Rule of 40 is for SaaS companies, software as a service. You're going to look at the revenue growth, and this is the quick and dirty method. The revenue growth, so you can see this, this right here is the revenue growth is 14.4%, and you're going to look at net profit margin. You're going to add those two numbers together, and you want the score to be 40 or higher. Now, you can do that through two ways. You can have lots of growth, and maybe you're not even a profitable company. You've got negative net profit margin, but your score is actually over 40 or you could have you know, moderate growth, like a 15% growth here with a 65% net profit margin. And if you add that up, of course, you're going to get you know, a knock, knock it out of the park number. You're gonna get almost an 80 on the, on the rule of 40. So this is really good. You look at Q3 2020, you got, you know, again, you're over 40. You look at uh, Q2 2020, you're over 40 again. I mean, the profit margin is solid, 35.17%. Look at Q1 of 2020, they did 30% and 18%, again, 48, 50%. Even back in 2019, before this whole pandemic, they were growing at a 21% clip with a net profit margin just under 30%. So these guys have been crushing it for a long time. They're doing really, really well. And let's dig into the company and see if it's something that might fit well into your portfolio. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you really quick, this is actually a present, this is a slide deck for a presentation that Adobe did for the analyst back in December, just about a month ago. And it's got some good information on it, just real quick, you know, 3.42 billion on the, on the Q4 FY20. Now look at the F on the right-hand side here, you've got FY 2020. So they have $12.87 billion of total revenue with a 15% year over year growth, that's solid. You've got the um, earnings per share, 81% year over year growth. And you've got things like new digital media ARR. So you think of ARR, that's really important in the, in the SaaS space. Uh, annual recurring revenue is what ARR stands for. That's at 1.85 billion, that's a solid number. 17% digital experience subscription revenue year over year growth. They're trying to build that more and more. And their cash flow from operations at 5.7 billion. So these are really solid financials. Let's look a little bit more into what's going on at Adobe and why it's something that you might want to consider for your portfolio. Now, the way this actually came up for me is I was looking at getting, I've had the stock for a while. So first of all, I've had the stock for a while and I'm looking on my other screen here to look at my portfolio. I have, I don't have a ton of it. I just added some this morning and I bought it um, under 470. So it was like at 468 or $469. It's now traded at 475. And I have a total of only uh, 20 shares. So I added just five shares today. I had 15 before. Right now I have 20 shares. My purchase price, my cost basis is $368.21. So I'm up about 29, 30% 
on what I own. And I would like to have more of it in my portfolio because right now it's the total is $9,504. I'd like to have maybe even double than that. So I'm going to watch it closely. If we have any breakdown in the market, I'll probably add. But the way that this actually came up, I've, I've liked the company for a while. I was going to buy a subscription to Photoshop for Fired Up Wealth so I could work on thumbnails and things like that. And I, I you know, looking at the pricing, I was kind of surprised how expensive it was. But then they have this bundle where they give you all these other apps included in the bundle. And they have some really good deals if you're a student. But, you know, if you pay for individual license, it's kind of expensive. And then the business license is even more expensive. But it really took me down a rabbit hole. I spent a few hours looking at what they had to offer and some of the, the applications that I didn't even know existed that are part of their whole cloud experience. And they've got some really cool stuff going on. So, you know, they're trying to focus on tectonic shifts towards all things digital. You hear it all the time. Digital transformation. That's what everybody's pumping, what everybody's pushing right now. You know, you got the golden age of design and creativity. Adobe can capture that. Digital imper imperative for customer engagement. They can capture that. You know, paper to digital automation. All these different things you see on your screen. Explosion of e-commerce. Everyone is a creator, including me. AI and machine learning, um, privacy and security mandate to earn trust. People buy experiences, not products. This is what Adobe is focused on. And if you recall Adobe, they used to be where you just buy a disc, right? You'd buy a CD and it was really easy to pirate those. And a lot of times it happened, you know, and the other thing too. So if you pay a hundred bucks for a disc, you're like, okay, hundred bucks. I own Adobe Photoshop, but you can give it to your friends. You can give it to your family. I'm talking back 20 years ago, probably before <laughs> you, uh, you, you were using Adobe Photoshop, but it's been around for a long time, but it wasn't a software as a service model before. And so now you think of, say it's a hundred dollars for a disc and it's probably, it probably used to be more than that. We're just using that as a simple number. But now say you pay, you know, 20 bucks, this hypothetical again, 20 bucks a month for a subscription every month. Well, it seems like a good deal, but in five months you could have already owned it. And now two years later, you're paying every single month. And they, you know, they claim to give you additional features and updates and they probably do some of that. But the reality is it's, you know, it's SaaS and SaaS is good for Adobe. It's good for a lot of businesses from a business perspective. It's nice to have, not have to put all that money, all that capital up front. It's better if you're an executive of a company or a business owner to have a monthly expense that goes out the door versus a big lump fee up front. And that goes the same, you know, with software or software as a service. When you think of the cloud, when you think of enterprise software, when you think of something like Oracle or any of the ERP vendors that are all shifting more to, to the cloud, you know, it used to be that you, you would pay for an expensive implementation, and it would be one big, massive upfront fee. You had to buy servers. You had to pay for the implementation costs, all those things. Now with software as a service, you can subscribe to the software in the cloud and pay you know, an annual or even a monthly fee like with Adobe here and not have that big upfront cost. So that's kind of you know, what the model is based around. And that software as a service, the company really reinvented themselves from that on-prem, old school you know, CD type legacy company to this, you know, software as a service revenue stream. It's got recurring revenue. It's great for investors because we have a really good idea of what their revenues are going to be. And as you can see, the profit margins I showed you earlier are very good on software as a service. So this, this slide is really important. There's a bunch of slides in here and I encourage you to take a look at it. I'll put it down in the description so you can come take a look at this, this deck, but this is important unmatched scale from cloud to the edge. And it talks about on the left-hand side, Adobe creative cloud unleashing creativity in the middle Adobe document cloud on the right Adobe experience cloud powering digital business. So if you look at this 15 billion content platform assets, 230 million Adobe stock assets, 350 million CC mobile apps downloaded. I mean, look, look at some of the numbers on your screen. Pretty, I mean, 30 billion cloud API calls per day, 7,200 service releases per month, 25 billion content pages delivered per day. So this is a massive company and there's still a lot of room to grow. Something else I wanted to point out really quick. So document cloud technology themes. Now, if you own DocuSign like I do, you want to know that they do, you can integrate Adobe Sign with core Acrobat workflows or the enterprise. So this is an option for some contracts, but it doesn't always work for everybody, but just know they do have 
digital signature services. It talks about delivering rich PDF collaboration services and then open PDF a- APIs. APIs is something that they're, they're really focusing on services and open APIs more and more and more integrating with other platforms, other products, other companies, other services. So it's something to just to keep in mind as an investor. So they really want to be about creativity for all. So here, professionals, communicators, consumers, the whole gamut, you know, freelancers, agencies, enterprises, small businesses, education, government, hobbyists, and they have really good discounts if you're um, in education. So if you're in college or if you're a teacher, you can get really good student discounts. The way they prove that you're a student is you have to use an educational email address or something with a .edu. So um, I know some of you are thinking, hey, I still have my old ASU.edu. But um, that is, it's a massive discount. It's, it's literally like a third of the price if you do a student discount with, with Adobe. This is a cool slide here. It talks about really the, the changes over the years with their, their document cloud innovation engine. I won't read it all, but you can see in 2017, how much they've grown, what they've added, 2018, 2019, you know, they've got now Adobe Photoshop camera, if you're not familiar with that, you know, things like um, these live streaming and iPads, which you couldn't do before. So some really cool stuff that they've, they've continued to innovate their products and that retains the subscribers, you know, so people aren't churning as much. So people, you know, keep their subscription and keep paying for it every single month. So this is a cool slide too, just real quick, all the different apps, if you're not familiar. So multi-surface apps, you know, Photoshop, everybody knows Photoshop, but there's Photoshop Lightroom, there's Illustrator, there's Spark, there's Arrow, Acrobat, everybody knows what PDF Acrobat, I think for the most part is. But there's, there's a lot of like desktop, desktop apps, you know, Animate, InDesign. You, you can buy a subscription that includes all of these. And I think it'd be fun to play around with some of these that I've never even heard of. But there's some cool stuff. You know, mobile apps, they've got Photoshop Camera, Photoshop Express. They've got something called Fresco. Lots of different apps within that. And in the cloud here, you can see they got content, community, community and team. So really good stuff here on this slide. I thought this was great. So 300 billion PDFs opened in DC apps in the last 12 months. 300 billion, over 300 billion, 50 million downloads for Adobe Scan, 90 million liquid mode files processed in the first seven months, and 300% year over year growth of Adobe Sign transactions in, in Acrobat. So people are using you know, the Adobe Sign. If you haven't heard of it, they're using it. They also, Adobe has another app that basically competes with you know, Zoom and uh, Ring Central and things like that, where you can actually you speak on camera and, and do digital meetings. So that's something to keep in mind as well. A lot of people don't realize they have that, you know, they've got, um, you know, you can see on your screen, there's just tons of stuff here. There's more information that I can cover in one YouTube video. Definitely check this out on your own. Lots of good information on here. If you're trying to do due, due diligence, I would read through the whole thing, you know, comprehensive document cloud offerings on and on and on. So the, the digital media summary, 62 billion in TAM across creative cloud and document cloud, $62 billion TAM is what they're, they're looking at. So, you know, again, these guys have already had explosive growth, but now it's about solid growth plus that net profit margin. And as an investor, it's just a safe, in my opinion, a safe company I can put my money where I know I'm going to get a solid return on it. And I'm not going to, you know, it's not going to blow up and go to zero. This company is solid. And in my opinion, the company is not going anywhere. This talks about their leadership recognition. You know, you can see their leaders pretty, you know, if you've ever seen a magic quadrant, you want to be in the top right hand of this box, right? So anytime you're in the top right hand, you're usually pretty good. Now it doesn't show its competitors next to it, but you can see they're in the top right hand on everything except for AI and enterprise marketing clouds. And they're getting better with that. In fact, they just made a recent acquisition to, help improve in that area. So, I mean, this is actually really solid when you can see this, you know, from CRM lead management, you know, just things that you don't even think about when it comes to Adobe, that they actually have leadership recognition in. Another really cool slide here, it's kind of the NASCAR slide, you know, we call it Adobe Experience Cloud, mission critical across industries. I mean, you can see retail, financial services, all the different companies that they work with, all the, all the different customers. So I thought that's a really good uh, slide to take a look at. Okay, again, I, I could spend an hour just going through this deck because there's so much good information. So last slide, and then I'm going to go, and I'm actually going to show you a chart, and I'm going to show you what I think about Adobe at its current level. It's trading at $475 right now. 
is it a buy? You know, stay tuned and I'll, I'll take a look at a chart on TradingView. So this is their creative cloud business momentum. You're talking about 75% individual subscribers to new franchise. I mean, just look at all these numbers. They're great. 45 million students use Adobe Spark. I never would have guessed that. It seems like a crazy good number. You know, 60% year over year subscriber growth for emerging markets. There's such, there's so much good information on here, guys. Take a look at this. You know, if you don't like Adobe now, if you read this whole thing, I mean, look at the digital media AR. I mean, talking about the growth from 2017 to 2020 here, just amazing uh, growth and momentum. And there's really some of the stuff these guys do. I mean, nobody really, you think of, they're just the best of breed. It's like when you think of PDFs, like Adobe PDF, like there's other, you know, there's other applications, but I can't even think of one. Can you? Maybe you can. I personally can't. And you think of Photoshop, I mean, there's other apps that do it, but you know, Photoshop has been around a long time and it's kind of the go-to. It's like when you talk about Kleenex, you know, if you want a tissue paper, you want a Kleenex, even if it's a Costco brand, you know, tissue paper, you know, Photoshop really has that, that brand recognition. You know, Adobe is doing some great things. Um, they're doing some partnerships right now with, with Disney. Uh, if, if you saw the movie soul that just came out on Disney plus, they're doing like a, um, uh, basically a contest like an art contest where you use adobe to create art based on the movie soul you know just some really cool stuff that they're doing but growth and margin at scale 2023 total addressable market is 147 billion and that's including all of their different products and brands so 147 billion three years from now is the total addressable market you know you can look at their um their margins i mean we looked at some of that earlier Let's take a look at a chart. I'll tell you what I think about the stock. I appreciate your time and attention. Hold on one second and we will continue. Okay, guys, real quick with Adobe. I wanted to look at this because the PE ratio is important on this. I'm a long-term investor on this stock. So, you know, 44.81. And obviously, if you're looking at high growth stocks, you're not always looking at PE. But the nice thing about Adobe, I mean, I showed you earlier, it's given me a rule of 40. And the PE ratio, yeah, 44.8 is higher than the S&P 500, of course. But I mean, there's stocks out there like, look at McDonald's, for example, which maybe isn't the best example. I mean, they have a dividend, of course. But this thing's a 32 PE ratio. It doesn't have nearly as much growth or, or profit margin. So I like the valuation here. And let's look at some technicals on it. Now, this is a chart. This is a three-month chart. I'm on TradingView, and I'm using pivot points. You can go in and you can go under templates select on swing swing trading there and you get the pivot points you can come in and you can change these traditional fib classic all those i've just got it on traditional and i'm looking at some basic pivot points now you could argue that this is probably a little bit overdone in my opinion i mean i think it's an attractive price here you could see it's kind of at the bottom of these s's at the bottom of the s5 on this row here and on this side i mean if we were to go any lower you're looking at about a 461 dollar mark this morning it got to 466 dollars and 54 cents it's trading right now at about 475 dollars a share the all-time high is 536 dollars and i think you could see this stock get back to that even get to 550 plus in 2021 if you just draw just a quick line here you know if you were to follow these lines in this area you know it doesn't quite touch all of them but you can see it kind of broke that. So even if you want to make a new line down here, I mean, to me, this thing, you know, probably should have should have stayed a little bit higher. You know, it, it's generally making higher highs and higher lows, which is what you want. It's trending upward. But it did break that trend a little bit. Sentiment's a little bit down. And you can see it, you know, sold a little bit more than maybe, than maybe a lot of people would have thought it would have. So if you look at this, you go into technicals on trading view now that you can change this. this is one day you can go one month one month we're at 67 on the rsi one day we're at 41 so it's, it's getting beat up pretty good i mean if you look at it it's at 475 bucks the 100 day simple moving average is 483 so we're actually lower than that you know the the 200 day simple moving average is 436 the ema is 441 if it gets below 450 in my opinion it's a strong buy I'd be adding more shares. I've got 20 shares. I'd be willing to go, you know, even up to 100 shares on a company like Adobe if I got the right price on it. So, you know, if you look at a Fibonacci, I mean, this thing, you know, 530, the high was 536. It could easily go on the classic pivot points in the R3 of something like $568. Um, so 
I see it as probably, you know, being 550 plus in 2021, if you give it a, a one year target. So again, it's not going to blow the doors off and give you a hundred percent return in your portfolio, but it's, I think it's an attractive price. And if you look at growth out there, you look at SAS plays and you look at the price to earnings ratio and you look at the growth prospects and the things that are going out there, there's a few companies that come to mind. This is one that I definitely think is a value really in this price. And I, I like it even at $475, you know, I might nibble on it there. And if it goes lower, you know, add a little bit more, look for 461. If it breaks that, you know, maybe it gets down to, you know, below 450 in there. I think it'd be a great buy and I'd be adding more to my portfolio as well. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Um, you know, if you like these videos, subscribe. We also have a Facebook group you can check out. We also have a Patreon, which has a Discord channel. So if you're interested in that, join Patreon. And uh, we've got the, the Discord team. We, we talk about different stock ideas and trying to outperform the market. And we've got about 250 members right now, um, you know, all working kind of as a team to outperform. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It really has. It's been a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, take a look. If not, we have a free Facebook group or just subscribe and, you know, check out the YouTube videos. I'm doing this full time now. So 2021, my focus really is going to be the stock market. Uh, and creation as well. So definitely subscribe. It's going to be a great year for Fired Up Wealth. I appreciate your time and attention. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.